this movie is awesome. You can enjoy, you can enjoy Harry Potter and all those other movies. You're definitely. You definitely can enjoy our movie. I think the thing is, because yeah. people see like Chris Chris Columbus, it's like, okay, he directed the first two Harry Potters. Um, he's not going to do the same thing twice. He's not going to repeat himself. He never has, and he never will. Yeah. And so I think this is going to be, a, a, it's something completely different because he's a talented filmmaker, mm -hmm. and he's always trying to do something new. And uh, I think he achieved his goal in this one. And um, you know, I think that's the biggest, a, a huge difference. The and the fact that he can make it, it this, you know, the movie in the same genre and have it be different. That's very, you know. Not everyone can do that. Not people can do that. Yeah. Well, I won't name names, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I and you know I thought that it was very creative that you guys actually kind of pulled off bringing in you know iPods and stuff like that because so many movies try to do that and it doesn't work. And yeah, we have to do it in a subtle way. Yeah. Not just, you know, try to make it an advertisement. It's not like, yeah, this is what's paying for this scene. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, it's also a part of bringing it into the modern world. Mm -hmm. Kids yeah. use iPods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it has to be handled with a certain delicacy so it doesn't come off as being che cheesier in your yeah, face. Like was Jake was like, saying earlier, you know, it's... Uh, Tricking the kids into to learn, into learning the uh, yeah. learning the actual myths, you know. Oh yeah, the iPod. Oh, it's really it's really the shield. Yeah, the oh, shield is a reflection you know. in. Yeah. I mean, if, if the original myth, is the shield <laughs> but um, and the original yeah. myth, you, you could look at Medusa's reflection without being turned down, and he uses the shield to look mm -hmm. at reflection and analysis. The, yeah, the iPod. So yeah, it's uh, a modernized version. It's a little flitter of it. It's it's a movie. You know, we're, we're focused on making a ride, making uh, a story that you can lose yourself in and just have a good time watching. And the movie's bigger yeah. than one character. I mean, it's about everybody. You know, it's about the film. It's like no one stands out more than everyone's in. You know, we all, I think everyone did a great job in the film. Everybody had a great share of, of great moments, and, and that's where the ride comes in. I think the reason Rick, Rick uh, Ryder put, because in the book, you know, he had, there's like, what, blue Coca-Cola, like he was very proud of his Lunchables and the book, I think he did that because I think the goal is to get kids to go, well maybe, maybe I'm a demigod. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. you know, I eat Lunchables, like that, I go to school with Lunchables every day. Kitty. And it's like, you know, it's like I live with my, like I'm a single, live with a single parent, maybe my dad's a god. I think it's mm -hmm. a, that's, that's the magic uh, we're trying to bring back to kids is their uh, sense of imagination. Yeah, you don't get that a lot in this And possibility, yeah. yeah. Because like, they can be anything. And they, yeah. so they're not... Uh, to their... dream. That's what Spielberg did for me watching those. Exactly. Remember, remember we used to watch those freaking dinosaurs. E. Like when first E. T. Yeah. We need more filmmakers like that these days. That's why we're in this room right now. Exactly. Really, really like that, that, that and he's part. a product of Robert Zemeckis and John Hughes and all these guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Chris is a product of those. You know, so he's a son of of uh, the demigod Spielberg. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's sort of the sense of there's something, you know, when you're a kid, you, you have, you use your imagination, there's a sense of there's something else going on um, in the world besides what you see, you know, and I think that's why I love fantasy films, and it sort of plays into that. That's why I love Susan Boyle. <laughs> exactly, exactly I dream, though. I dream. But that's why people love Susan Boyle, because it's sort of like, no matter who you are, or, or what what you are, or where you are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you know, you can, you can be you can be anything. You can do amazing things, and I think that's one of the reasons why kids relate to this story and uh, um, why it was so fun to make the movie. Yeah. So, what was it like emoting in the room full of monsters when there's nothing really there? How, how difficult is that? Not at, uh, you know, you you create. Uh, you, you mean actually acting like you're supposed to be fighting something? You know, you create the comfort level. Uh, you go on to a set, you can make the environment what you want to make it. So, uh, I mean, th I guess that's why we're there, though, is because we can make it as comfortable as possible and feel free to, and Chris makes it. Uh, mm -hmm. Your, your imagination is your only limitation in that, in that aspect because it could be anything, it can be as scary as you want a monster, or it could be, they could be attacking you and you decide it, and then they have to visually put it in later and they'll make it happen. So that's why you react because mm -hmm. the snake came at you. But when doing it on set, you know, it's just, you know, finding that comfort level. Yeah. Yeah. And then the animator did that too, and each, each, you look at a Hydra, each head has its own personality, and like, if you look at different, uh, like different, we all fought differently too, 
the Hydra, you know what I mean? And, and you look at the movie, it's like, I, I'm like, what if we threw snacks in his mouth and knocks the knife out of my hand? And, and, you know, they like, and Chris has accepted it. Like, before, they, there's nothing in the script told him to fall, nothing that said, do that. It's just, you know, just just go with it. And you see, the, the they made the, uh, the, uh, the Hydra eating the snacks, and it was really cool. It's like, how can you, how can you not have fun with doing that? You know? So what was the casting process like for you guys? Um, we all walked up together and we just knew yeah. each other. <laughs> we found each other. We found each other through a quest. Uh, 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 you guys want to go first or should I know? I guess I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it makes sense because of the order. Right, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was really easy for me. Um, <laughs> it <was just> easy. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. No, no, it wasn't that. I, I mean, I just didn't even know. It didn't, it didn't give me a sense of how big the film was. I just, uh, I guess Chris wanted uh, to me. I guess he saw this film that I did and just had an idea that he wanted me to do it. And um, we met, hit it off, just, you know, we met Brandon, we went right into it. Mm -hmm. um, we tested together. Yeah. The same, uh, you know, they do yeah. a, a, a screen test. Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, they found their, uh, their choices and made sure we worked together. Heroes. It was just a really quick and easy <laughs> process. But then, you know, uh, came along trying to find the Annabeth. Well, yeah, I guess I guess yeah. Annabeth was a little bit harder to find. Yeah. I was cast even after uh, Jake was. Um, I mean, it was really quick for me. It was harder for them, I think, finding the Annabeth they wanted. I guess it was about two weeks from start to finish, uh, from putting myself on tape to moving to Vancouver to film. And I just remembered, actually, um, that I didn't read the script until after I had been cast and moved to Vancouver. Um, because from my perspective, um, I was in New York and the buzz around this movie was huge and everyone was so excited and um, the people that, <laughs> the people that uh, um, I knew in the business, you know, said this is a movie that's going to change your life and uh, it was really exciting to get it and to be a part of it. And, uh, Nobody tells me anything. I didn't get any he, of those talks. He was like, oh, another movie. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no I just saw Chris Columbus's name. It yeah. was just something I really wanted to be a part of. Also, I think it was a couple It was a couple months later, so I think hype built up um, in the sort of movie world about this film. That's a very physically active film. Did, did you guys do martial arts training? Uh, yeah. Well, I did. Short training. I, just, yeah. Uh, I did. I fought with some crutches. I didn't show you the thing, but yeah, I did. We all trained before. Like, it was it was me. It was me. Um, me. It was me. It was me. <laughs> it was all him. <laughs> <laughs> I did all the training. Just me. No, it, it was all of us. Us three. I was trying to. I'm, I'm sorry, we're bugging. It was all of us three months. Before, like we we trained together and we, mm -hmm. we did boxing and karate. Yeah, we did do boxing. Didn't remember we? that? Remember yeah. that? Yeah, that was mainly to get us in shape and just kind of get us like yeah. Because you know, I, I grew up in martial arts, so I had that background. I actually own a sword for whatever reason. And so. he was kind of like the good guy. Like, I mean, I mean, I mean, the guy that like knew his yeah, stuff before right. going in, and we were like the we were like, we were like the what? guys that like needed <laughs> really like, a lot of training. We couldn't stress. Jake went in there like ready to fight. <laughs> well, I mean, knew all when I came stuff. in, he's knee in the it bag. Was, it was like three weeks before filming, and uh, Jake was awesome. And I came in, and we were training together, and I like looked like Napoleon Dynamite kind of compared <laughs> to Jake. Um, but the stunt team was amazing, and you know, worked hard. And yeah, finally, months of training before we got to learn a lot of skills that we needed to <laughs> use while filming this movie. So there's four more books, right? In the series, would you guys be interested in doing another one? If yeah, if fans like it, that would be great. These movies are so fun to make. They are. Thank God. Uh, it's not even work. <laughs> There's work involved, but... Uh, so you said it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, 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 for us. it's easy to do. It's no, easy I'm, to be I'm part of it. We all get along as you do. It's yeah. not like you, you, it's not like you go to work every day and you're like, Oh, it's just work. work. <laughs> I like oh. hang out with Logan, Jake, and Brandon. You know what's cool too? You know, it's really awesome. You get to they, they made a really good environment for us. So they would give us like smoothies and massages and shit. <laughs> yes, what? it was a spa. Yeah, no, it was, it was a spot. This movie was like going to the you spa. Can't, no, no, you can't tell me they didn't that. give us. They, they weren't giving me smoothies. They were giving they me protein shakes. They gave us smoothies. They gave us coffee every day. We went. I've been never been in any production. Like, are you? Are you? Oh, no, they spoiled us with the they food. They spoiled us with the food. Are you serious? Oh, the food was amazing. It was amazing.
amazing. And it was amazing. <laughs> Why are we talking about the food? <laughs> no, I'm saying it was a great experience. If you don't understand, there's, some, there's, certain, there's certain films that you go on that you get treated bad, and they treated us very well. That's yeah, what I'm saying. They did. What would you guys like to see come from the sequels? Like, what, what direction would you guys like to see the sequels take? We're just going to amp it up every time. If we can. Just make it more edgy, get it darker, make it darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was kind of curious about yeah. because I mean, you know, I read synopsis from the books, and it seems like they get progressively darker. I hope so. And so, yeah, you know, as as the uh, as as the characters get older, the audience needs to. You know, I mean, you know, we just mature with with the characters too. Yeah, like it's Luke, Luke takes gets taken over, his body gets taken over uh, through Kronos, and kind of becomes like the ultimate evil. And I'm really curious to how that would be played out. I'm intrigued by it. So we're probably going to have a college-aged Percy mm -hmm. around the last one? Yeah. <laughs> Scholarly Percy Jackson. <laughs> That's so, really cool. Aside from Chris Columbus, who's your favorite director? Everybody can go around here. Oh, my goodness. I mean, when we share Fincher. Uh, oh, yeah. You mean working with? No, I mean uh, watching. I grew, I, I'm oh, Scorsese. Long you train Scorsese a lot. I just... The way he shoots is, uh, is the way I would shoot as a director, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Paul Thomas Anderson. I, let's go on. There's it's so been so hard. So many. Peter Bogdanovich. Mm -hmm. Of course, Kubrick. You know, the music video directors. Michel Gondry. Michel Gondry is awesome. Yeah, I love all of them. You guys, you guys have such a great chemistry. I'd love to see a commentary track with all of you. Like, yeah. it, no, it, it, no, it, 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 it's the food, what was that food they brought? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, action going. <laughs> yeah. The food. We should, we should do it like Step Brothers. Yeah, yeah bring out a guitar and sing the commentary. That'd be so cool. I actually would love to do that. Let's talk to the podcast. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. It was such a pleasure. Yeah, definitely.